today we are going over 7.3, which is percent and estimation. And the main idea is estimating percents by using fractions and decimals. So example one, we have 49% of 110, and we are going to estimate by using fractions, as the directions say. So we get a look at this problem here. We have 49%, and we need to estimate by rounding to a nearer number that's going to work better with our percent, meaning percent is going to give us n over 100, right? n percent equals n over 100. So with 49%, 49 over 100 is not going to simplify. So we're going to round this up to 50% so that we can cancel when we label it as 50 over 100. 50 over 100 is going to simplify into 1 half. If we divide both the top and bottom by 50, we'll get 1 half. And so now we have 1 half of 110. Of, again, a key word is going to be multiplication. So 1 half times 110, and we can now cancel. We can divide 2 by 2 to get 1, and 110 by 2 to get 55. Multiplying across, 55 times 1 gives us 55. We also could have solved this on our calculator once we had gotten it into that percent form, fraction form. Example 2 leads us to 26% of 12. A number close to 26% that's going to work with 100 is 25, because 25 goes into 100 four times. So, I like to draw an arrow to say that we're estimating here to 25%, and 25% equals 25 over 100. When we simplify this, using division right there, since both the top and bottom are divisible by 25. Otherwise, we could use the L method. However, we're choosing a number that we should know goes into 100 easily. So dividing both by 25, we'll get 1 fourth. Now back to the problem. We have 25%, which we switched into 1 fourth of 12. So we have 1 fourth times 12, and 4 goes into 12 three times, and 4 goes into 4 once. So canceling that out, 3 times 1 is 3, and now we are done. That's our answer. Our last example using fractions is 33.6% of 60. 33.6% is close to 33.3%, so we're going to say we're going to round to 33.3% which is 33.3 over 100. 33.3 .3 is about one-third. Typically for one-third we'd have to have a repeating three. However, in this case I just put we approximate that it's one-third. Because that's close enough and we are approximating. Now we're going to take one-third of 60 now that we have it in fraction form. 3 goes into 60 20 times, and 3 goes into 3 once, so now we have 20 times 1 gives us our answer of 20. The next slide gives us that we are estimating by using 10%, and in this case we are actually using decimals now. So writing decimal. So, our first example is 29% of 70. This is a two-step problem now. We are going to round 29% to the nearest tenth percent, and 29% is close to 30%. So, I'll do my arrow and write 30%, and remembering now here, I'll break it down like a factor tree, 30% is 3 times 10%. And we want it like this, so then we see how many tenths we have. Now, by using 10%, we're going to find what 10% of 70 is. find out what 10% of 70 is, the one trick we have to do is we just take our decimal at the right of 70 and bring it over 1 to the left. Since we're dividing by 10, we move our decimal 1 to the left. So, same thing here. And we get 7 is 10% of 70. So, 7 times 10 is 70, and that's correct. 
So now we have 10% of 70 is 7, and we also have 30% is 3 times 10%. So we're going to take that 3, and we're going to take that 7, and multiply them together to get 21. So as you see, we have 10% here, and we're kind of substituting our 7 in for our 10 over here. Next problem is 58% of 15. Again, we're going to round 58% to the nearest tenth, which is going to be 60%. 60% again is 6 times 10%. And then we're going to find 10% of 15 is easily found by moving our decimal over 1 to the left, and I get 1.5. So 10% of 15 is 1.5. And now, in a sense, we are substituting that back in for this 10% here. So I have 6 times 1.5, and that will give me 9. Our last example here is 82% of 45. So 82% is close to 80%, which is 8 times 10%. And another way you can realize is just the first digit here will give us the number we are taking to multiply. 10% of 45 is going to be 4.5. Sorry, 4.5 equals 10%. Now we're going to multiply our pieces together of 8 and 4.5 to get our result of 36. We plug that in on our calculator to double check. 8 times 4.5 equals 36. And that is our answer. And lastly, here we have theater. A theater sold 397 tickets to a comedy movie. Of the tickets sold, 58% were discounted for the kids. How many kids bought tickets for the concert? In this case, it's actually a movie, so we can forget that it was a concert. So, in this situation, we actually can round both numbers off because 397 is a little ugly to deal with because we don't know factors of 397. And it's not an even number, and it's really close to 400, so we're just going to round it to 400, part of estimating here. 58% is really close to 60%, so we're going to rewrite that as 60%. That's what we want to. So now we can use both methods. So we'll show you both methods of doing this one. Line down the middle. So we have 60% of 400, and we'll do this on the left in fraction form. So 60% equals 60 over 100. In this situation, I know I can cancel out and simplify there. However, I'm going to leave it as is because 100 works really well with 400. Now that I have 60 over 100 times 400, that's where our of came from, of the movie tickets, the tickets sold. So 100 cancels with 400 to give me 4 on top, 1 on bottom. 60 times 4 gives me the answer of 240 kids. Don't forget the label, it is a word problem. Now, trying to do it the other way, we have 60%, which is 6 times 10%. Now we just need to find that 10% so we can substitute in. So 400, if we move our decimal 1 to the left, we'll get 40.0. So just 40 equals 10%. So now we can fill that in up there. So now we have 6 times 40. Very similar problem. 4 times 6 is 24, having the 0 at the end. And again, we confirm that we do have the right answer of 240 kids. We have a couple extra problems here at the end. Um, these are more of a reminder that we can get multiple different answers using the same problem depending on how we round. So, with 219%, it seems most likely that we should just round it up 1% to get 220% of 48. Of is going to be multiplication, 48. In this case, since we have 220%, this is 22 times 10%. So we'll just take 10% of 48 
is going to be moving our decimal over 1 equals 4.8. Now 22 times 4.8 gives us 105.6. So as you notice in most of our examples we ended up with a good number. In this case we do have a decimal and that is alright. Going down, we have one-third percent of 596. So if we're dealing with a very, very small percent, we have to remember that this is smaller than zero, smaller than one. That's zero. So one-third percent can be rounded in several ways. If we round to the nearest tenth, it's going to be zero. And zero of any number in 596 we have here is going to equal zero. So zero times anything equals zero. Otherwise, we can also just set this up as more of an exact number and round our top number here. Round 596, we'll round that to 600. So now I have 600, and we have to find what one-third percent, meaning we're going to have one-third divided by 100. Again, when we're dividing by 100, we multiply by the reciprocal. So one-third times 1 over 100 gives us 1 over 300. So now we rewrite that up here, 1 over 300 times 600. 300 goes into 300 once and goes into 600 twice. And so we get the answer of 2. As I showed you, there was two different ways we could have rounded it. One gave us the answer of 2, the other gave us the answer of 0. Lastly, we have 0.5% of 121. There are two ways to do this, and the book actually shows a shortcut you can do when dealing with tenth of a percent. This wouldn't have worked in example 9, because example 9 was still a repeating decimal. In this case, we can round to the nearest percent in terms of taking 1% of 121. So 1% of 121 is going to be moving the decimal 2 to the left. We're going to get 1.21. And I would even recommend rounding that to 1.20, because 121 isn't the nicest number to deal with. So now we have 120, 1% of that is 1.2, 0.5% is half of that, so dividing this by 2, we'll get 0 0.6. If you have any more questions or need any more practice, feel free to check out the peer tutors or to quiz yourself on the quizzes.